know that Maya Sendermeyer and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. So far, I have shared my experiences of what it's like for me to live with autism. Other times, I have given my two cents as to what's going on with autism in the media. And finally, I also like to cover topics that I am passionate about that have absolutely nothing to do with autism whatsoever. Because Dr. Temple Grandin had made the suggestion in several of her talks and um, whenever she uh, goes on interviews that people on the spectrum need to put together a job portfolio based on all of the projects that they have made. So for me, uh, one of my job portfolios is uh, right here on YouTube. And uh, I uh, want to do more than just talk about autism. So anyway, um, tonight I would like to talk about my experiences of what it's like for me to live with autism and the name of my blog is called the It's Not Mentored to Be. And the reason why I'm talking about that is because I really feel it's very important for um, an individual on the autism spectrum or any other issues um, to have a mentor that's going to believe in them, that's going to teach them social skills, and um, they're going to expose them to new things. And they're going to be willing to... Um, look at the, you know, associate with them through the thick and thin of a situation. And I just really think that's very important. Unfortunately, there are lots of people on the autism spectrum that never, ever get that opportunity. In fact, I mean, it really depends on uh, if there are any positive sources in their lives. And if they don't have those positive sources, then um, there are no social skills. And then the other people have other people around them, like their family members and their peers, tend to look at them like they're a half of a person and they never really understand. And um, I almost never had the opportunity to have a mentor in 2003 when I had lived three miles away from an aunt and an uncle and two cousins. And um, back then I had wanted to live on my own because I was tired of... Um, being told, well, she can't do this and she can't do that. Her IQ is below a certain point, so she's low functioning. The older she gets, the more help she would need. Blah, blah, blah. So I wanted to prove everybody wrong, and then I wanted to move out on my own for other reasons because um, I was already having a hard time seeing other people go off to college and drive cars, and so I wanted to prove that I wasn't um, disabled. I wanted to prove that I was uh, just as brilliant and just as able as everybody else. Unfortunately, I had poor social skills and uh, I also um, lacked several very, very uh, critical independent living skills. So it was when I was living on my own, I was three miles away from my aunt and uncle and two cousins and uh, unfortunately, uh, the entire time that I was up there, um, my aunt and my uncle and my two cousins uh, refused to help me. They ignored me when they saw me in public, which uh, provoked me to anger. And at that point, I had a very explosive temper. And I mean, I used to be close with one of my cousins when she was younger, and then she hit puberty and she started ignoring me. So I didn't know how to communicate at that time. And so I was so embarrassed and hurt that I was um, bubbly and friendly. And she wanted to stare stare in a, in a certain direction and act like a stone cold statue or, or maybe a, uh, a guard in England. And so as I was walking away, I said the B word as loud as I could. And they took notice of that and, and told each other not to invite me to anything. And so I was ignored by them. They didn't call me to see how I was doing. I was not allowed to go over to their house. I mean, it was painful to see them, and I hoped every day that they would lighten up and invite me to things. And even further, they didn't take the time or the energy to um, pull me to the side and mentor me. I mean, they had, they had 365 days to get to know me as a person, and they couldn't do it. And I think possibly it was because there was a lot of new information about autism. At the same time, I mean, these people, um, you know, are incredibly intelligent. They have gone to college. I mean, my aunt um, has a uh, doctorate in um, in eye surgery or um, ophthalmology, and um, she. And I'm thinking, if she's intelligent enough um, to learn about eyes, she could have been intelligent enough to learn about autism and all the possibilities. I mean, she could have could have even um, listened to Temple Grandin. I don't know, but 
Um, instead, they uh, wanted to uh, shove me off on a regular social worker and have them do all the work. And then um, they wanted to put me into a group home setting, which I believe was a form of institutionalization. And then the, or the other option for me would have been to live on the streets. And the reason why was because um, they got this idea that um, autism is a form of psychosis like schizophrenia. And um, they were paranoid that I was going to have um, one of my little episodes and I was going to make a scene in front of my two cousins. And they were being really overprotective of them. And, um, yeah, and honestly, as you guys can hear in my voice, I'm angry about that. I'm angry. They had a golden opportunity to get to know me as a person. And instead, they denied me and disrespected me. And it's not fair. So, I mean, I, in fact, uh, they still seem to um, disrespect me as a person. And um, it's painful. <laughs> so, anyway, I was fortunate enough to um, have my aunt right down here in Atlanta who uh, was able to see that I was struggling and that uh, nobody was willing to step up to bat and take it the responsibility to help me. And it uh, made her angry. So she offered to have me come down here to Atlanta. And if it weren't for her, I would have not learned social skills. I would have not learned, uh, you know, learned how to give other people their space, handled my anger in a proper way, managed my money. I mean, and granted too, break through a series of barriers, and um, also do all kinds of wonderful things. So, anyway, if you live on the autism